Welcome to the course Netting Design Technology Flat Nets. In this course, you will understand the design possibilities in flat nets. You will also get an overview of the basic elements of netting, the different type of netted fabrics and understand the design possibilities in flat nets. This course comprises of four units and a final review session that invite you to reflect on what you have learned. The first unit introduce you to the machine netting. This unit comprises of three modules. By the end of this unit, students will be able to differentiate woven and knitted fabrics, classify netting and various categories, attain knowledge in flat nets in general, list various fabric structures the first module, Introduction to Knitting. Knitting or nets, what comes to your mind? T-shirts, sweaters, socks, gloves, caps, maybe foundation garments too, right? Shirt, trousers, kurta, etc. are generally woven. So, what is knitting and how is it different from weaving? Woven fabric is made up of interlacing of yarn. Knitted fabric is created by interlooping of yarn. Weaving requires two sets of yarn, namely warp and weft. For knitting, only one set of yarn is required, either weft or warp. The first classification of nets are based on whether you use weft yarn or warp yarn. If you use weft yarn, then it may be called as weft knitting and if you use warp yarn, then it may be called as warp knitting. Stretch is the most noticeable characteristics of knitted fabric. So, how is knitted fabric different from wovens? When you hold it, probably the stretch is the most noticeable characteristics of knitted fabric. Stretch is achieved with a non-stretchable yarn. So, how does the stretch happen with a non-stretchable yarn and why is the same yarn is used for weaving the fabric become non-stretchable? Let's look at weaving first. The yarn on both warp and weft direction are already stretched and then interlaced. In case of knitting, the same yarn is used to create loops. The loops can be stretched both horizontally and vertically till it straighten up. This gives the stretch to knit fabric. You can notice one more thing. The stretch in horizontal direction is much more than the vertical direction. As you have seen, the way knitted fabrics are formed, it is easy to unravel the fabric. This instability increases once you cut the fabric. So, it is required to be made stable on the edges by overlocking or flat locking once you cut it. Now, let us understand how loops are made using one of the most popular needle type, the latch needle. Let us understand the needle first. The name latch needle comes from the latch which can be closed or opened freely. The hook pulls the yarn from the yarn feeder and create the loop. The latch will automatically open when the needle goes up as the loop inside the hook slides down through the stem of the needle. If the needle pushed forward enough, the loop will be cleared of the latch. Now, when the needle comes down, the latch would be closed by the loop on the needle and the loop slip off from the needle. So, after when this needle goes up, it catches the new thread. Hold it, hold it. Just hold this here. Yeah, yeah that's it. And when this needle comes back, 
this loop slips over creating a, a loop structure. I will show it once again. Once the needle moves up, a yarn feeder will provide yarn to the hook of the needle. At the same time, the existing loop on the needle would have moved down beyond the latch. When the needle moves down, the hook draws yarn from the feeder to create a new loop. At the same time, the existing loop will slip over the new loop and create an interlooping structure. When a row of needles moves up and then down, one after the other, a row of knitted loops created. So, it is understood that if a knitting needle moves up and down and if there is a feeder available to feed the yarn when needle goes up, knitting may happen. The movement of needlers made possible by the movement of cam box or carriage over the needle bed. A needle bed is a metallic slab with grooves for needles to be placed facing up. The butt of the needle would be protruding out of the needle bed while the rest of the needle would be inside the groove. By pushing the butt up or down, you can control the movement of the needle. The cam box consists of a few cams which have grooves shaped in such a way that if the cam box moves over the needle bed, the butt of the needle will enter the cam groove and the groove will guide the needle up and down. The cam box also carries a yarn feeder which will feed the yarn whenever the needle comes up creating knitted loops. Needle movement for knitting with a diagram explaining the upward and downward movement of needles to create a nest. When the machine creates multiple rows of interlocked loops, a knitted fabric is formed. A closer look at the knitted fabric will give a clear idea about how these loops are interlocked. The row and column of loops would be very clear. The row of loops are called cores and the column of loops are called veil. So, to increase the length of a knitted fabric, the number of cores has to be increased and to increase the width of a knitted fabric, the number of veils has to be increased. Now, let us move on to learn about the basic types of knitting. Now, we move on to learn about the basic types of knitting. As discussed earlier, either warp yarn or weft yarn can be used for knitting. The classification start from the same difference. If warp yarns are used, then it is called warp knitting and if weft yarns are used, it is called weft knitting. In other words, if loops are produced vertically, then it is called warp knitting and if loops are made horizontally, then it is called weft knitting. Warp knitted, common warp knitted fabrics, oh, sorry, I think we need to cut it here. No? <laughs> Laces, mesh fabrics, fine fabrics used for laundry, thick fabrics used for outerwear are the most popular fabrics made out of warp knitting. Most commonly used knitted garments such as t-shirts and sweaters are made out of weft knitting. The most popular weft knitting machines are divided based on the shape of the needle bed. Based on the shape of the bed, the machines are classified as flat v-bed machines and circular bed machines. When the flat V-bed machines, in short flat knitting, produce mostly flat fabrics, the circular bed machines, in short circular knitting, produce tube shaped fabrics. The flat knitting machines produce coarser fabric compared to circular knit machines which produce finer fabric. The most commonly found sweaters are knitted in flat knit machines and the most commonly found t-shirts are made in circular knitting machines. In this course, since we are concentrating in flat knitting, it will be interesting to start with the name itself. The reason for flat v-bed knitting is because of the arrangement of two flat needle beds in inverted v position, which makes a right angle at the top of the needle bed. Let us look at these two fabrics closely. You can see the loops are bigger in one fabrics 
and the loops are smaller in another one. In other words, one is coarser and the other one is relatively finer. Now let us look at these two fabrics. The finer one is coarser now. The fineness and coarseness of the fabrics also related to the number of needles packed in one inch on one needle bed and it is known as gauge of the machine. The number of needles available in one inch of the needle bed is defined as the gauge. A machine with five gauge would be producing a thicker fabric compared to a machine with 10 gauge. The most common machine gauges are 2.5 gauge, 4 gauge, 5 gauge, 7 gauge, 8 gauge, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 20 gauge, 22 gauge, 24 gauge, 25 gauge, 28 gauge, 30 gauge, etc. Today, there are machines available with 80 gauge also. Most of the flat knitting machines are below 20 gauge and most of the circular knitting machines are above 20 gauge. Though technically it is possible to produce circular knitting machines with coarser gauges like 7 or 5, it is not popular in the knitting industry for varieties of reasons. The flat knitting machine needles used in advanced knitting machines have an additional latch on the side of the needle which helps in transfer of loops. This additional latch prevents the needle manufacturers to produce gauge finer than 20. In future, there may be a way to produce finer flat knitting needles as the demand for flat knitted garments are ever increasing. Let's look at the basic stitches in knitting. There are three basic stitches in flat knitting. A full loop called knit, a half loop called tuck and no loop called mess. To produce a knit stitch, the needle has to go all the way up so that the loop inside the needle hook was cleared of latch area and the new loop would be taken through the previous loop. To produce a tuck stitch, the needle has to go only half way just enough to catch the yarn from the feeder. At the same time, the loop inside the hook will slip down over the latch but not clear the latch. When the needle comes down, the previous loop will return to the hook and the hook will also have a new half loop. Since the new loop has not passed through the previous loop, it cannot be called as a full loop, hence the half loop. To produce a miss stitch, the needle should not go up at all. The needle misses the knitting and produce no loop and hence a miss stitch. To produce all these three types of loops or stitches, the cam should be set accordingly. The ca cam box has a groove which can be altered to get all the three basic stitches. For knit, keep all the cams in position and the groove will guide the needles all the way up uh, to form the stitch. For tuck stitch, switch on the tuck lever and the groove will be altered and the needle will raise only halfway and come back creating tuck stitch. For miss, switch on the miss lever and this will allow the needle to pass through the cam box without pushing the needle upward resulting a miss stitch. There is one more cam which is called a stitch cam. This cam moves up or down which will alter the length of a stitch. If the cam is set lower, the needle after receiving the yarn on hook will come down more than usual and result a larger stitch. If the stitch cam is set at a higher level, the needle will come down less than usual forming a smaller stitch. For example, a 7 gauge machine with a smaller stitch can produce a fabric which looks like 9 gauge and the same machine with a larger stitch can produce a fabric which may look like 5 gauge. Finally, let us learn about the various type of fabric produced in flat V-bed knitting machine. Basic fabric design, single jersey and double jersey. Let us look at the loop closely and let us imagine the back view of the same loops. 
you can now notice a prominent V shape formation on one side and a horizontal streak formation on the other side. If you see a fabric with V shaped stitches on one side and horizontal streaks on the other, you may be looking at a single jersey fabric. The single jersey is produced by engaging needles from one bed of the machine. Either front or back bed can be used for producing single jersey. The loop diagram for a single jersey can be drawn as shown here. We have to disable one needle bed to produce single jersey. This can be achieved by closing the levers in cam box. The cam setting may be represented as shown here. If you see prominent V shape formation on both the side and it looks identical, you may be looking at a double jersey fabric. A double jersey can be illustrated as a sandwich of two single jerseys back to back. Double jersey is produced by engaging needles from both the beds simultaneously. The loop diagram for a double jersey can be drawn as shown here. Since we are engaging both needle beds in netting, there is no need to close any of the cams. The cam setting may be represented as shown here. Some of the basic fabric structures are produced by combining knit and miss stitches and they are called Milano structures. Since the presence of miss stitch restrict the stretchability of the fabric, it is ideal for parts of garments where stiffness is required. For example, the collar of a polo shirt. There are four types of Milano structures and they are half Milano, alternating half Milano, Milano rib and rib ripple. To produce half Milano, starts with a course of full needle net on both the beds followed by a single bed net complete the structure. To produce alternating half Milano, start with a course of full needle net on both the beds and a back bed net followed by another course of net on both the beds and a front bed net is repeated to complete the structure. This is like half Milano repeated two times with single bed being reversed from back to front in the second repeat. To produce Milano rib, start with a coarse full needle net on both the beds and a back bed net followed by another coarse of front bed net complete the structure. Since three courses complete the repeat, we have to show two repeat units in the cam notation. To produce rib ripple, start with a course of full needle net on both the beds and two courses of back bed net complete the structure. Some other fabric structures are produced by combining knit and tuck stitches and they are called cardigan structures. Since the presence of tuck stitch double up the loop on a single needle hook, the bulkiness increases in the knitted structure and also increase its stretchability. There are six types of cardigan structures and they are as follows. Half cardigan, cardigan, double half cardigan, double cardigan, half cardigan double sided and rippled cardigan. To produce half cardigan, start with a course of full needle net on both the beds followed by a full net on front bed and full tuck on back bed to complete the structure. To produce cardigan, start with a course of full front net and full back tuck followed by another course of full front tuck and full back net to complete the structure. As the name suggests, double half cardigan resembles half cardigan. To produce double half cardigan, start with two courses of front and back net is followed by two courses of front net and back tuck to complete the structure. As the name suggests, double cardigan resembles cardigan. To produce double cardigan, start with two courses of front net and back tuck followed by two courses of front tuck and back net to complete the structure. Half cardigan double sided is just a reverse of the second repeat of the half cardigan. To produce half cardigan double sided, start with a course of front and back net followed by a course of front net and back tuck. Now start again with a course of front and back net followed by 
a course of front tuck and back net. Ripple cardigan is very similar to the construction of rib ripple. To produce ripple cardigan, start with front and back net followed by three courses of front net and back tuck. The possibility of transferring of loops from one needle to another makes the flatbed knitting all the more preferred way of making garments these days. Shifting a loop from one needle to another on the same bed is known as move. Shifting of loops of one bed to needles of another bed is known as transfer. On hand driven low tech machines, transfer and move is achieved by a transfer tool. The machine operator uses this tool to pick up the stitch to be shifted and put it into the desired needle to create the pattern. A variety of designs and patterns can be achieved through the transfer and move technique. Point tail designs are achieved by move technique. The desired loops of a single jersey fabric is moved towards the right or left side on the same needle bed. This creates an empty needle and leaves a hole in the fabric. These holes can be arranged in such a way to create desired pattern. A drop needle design structure is usually created by switching off few needles. Before switching off the needles, the existing loops has to be shifted either with move or transfer techniques. This will create a rib pattern and a variety of designs can be achieved. To create transfer pattern, transfer few loops to the opposite bed, continue knitting for few more courses and then transfer back and continue knitting. Cable pattern is one of the most popular structure which uses the drop needle design as well as move in particular way. First, create an identifiable front net veil cluster by giving back net on either side of the cluster. This will make the cluster to stand out as shown in the image. Now divide the veil cluster into two and cross the loops as shown. Racking is achieved by relative movement of one needle bed against the other sideways. This will shift the loops of one bed in relation to the loops of the other bed. This makes the veil to deflect towards right or left. To show the real effect of racking, a rib structure with drop needle is used. The front stitch will then move towards right or left over the back net and a zigzag pattern will emerge. Veil deflection is achieved with a technique similar to the cable pattern. In cable pattern, we exchange the front net loops by crossing and placing it in each other's position. In veil deflection, we exchange a set of front loops and a set of back loops by crossing and placing it in each other's position. This will create a pattern where the veils get deflected either towards the right or left creating a pattern. Though the flat bed knitting machine is known to make flat fabrics, it is capable of producing a tubular fabric as well by using a combination of mess and knit. While knitting odd number of courses, knit on one bed and while knitting the even number of courses, knit on the opposite bed to create a tubular structure. This technique also allows one to produce a single jersey fabric with double the width of the needle bed. When you hear knitwear, what comes to your mind? Is it a stretchable material? There are garments like t-shirts, sweaters, foundation garments, outerwear, socks, gloves, many more. So what is common in all these products? And 
what is that one factor which makes a difference or differentiate from woven material that is the stretchability so is that yarn is different or it's the way it is created is different so let's say for example we are going to use the same yarn for knitting as well as weaving let's see what happens with that so i'll start explaining weaving first then i'll explain knits now in weaving we need two sets of yarns one run horizontally another one run vertically through this like this so you can see both these sets are fully stretched the yarns are fully stretched while weaving so there is no scope for this yarn to stretch any more and the woven fabric will not create any stretch you also must have seen we are using two sets of yarn warp if we call this is warp then this would be weft and warp and weft interlace together to create the woven fabric now let's look at the knit fabric in knitting we'll take one yarn and we'll create a loop with the help of the machine we'll create a second loop third fourth like that and the same yarn come back interloop a technique called interloop and create a second row of sorry row of loops this way the fabric is completed now look at this in weaving you have a completely stretched yarn creating the fabric in knitting the same yarn is created as a loop now that means this can be stretched in two direction that is this can be stretched something like this that is a horizontal stretch this can also be stretched something like this which is a vertical stretch so it is not the material or the yarn which is making the stretch it is the way in which we are going to convert this into a fabric that is causing the stretch in nets the loops shape itself is creating the stretch now as i said earlier we have two sets of yarns required for weaving warp and weft in knitting we need only one set either warp or weft so the ex the example i showed this is a weft knitting example now the loops are created horizontally that's in weft direction and in warp knitting the loops would be created in a vertical direction so we have two branches in knitting based on the type of yarn used that is called warp knitting and weft knitting now if you look at the most of the garments produced whether it is sweaters t-shirts or foundation garments most of the garments are knitted with weft knitting technology most of the lace structures and mosquito nets fishing nets and many other net structures are created with warp knitting technology warp knitting is also used for many technical fabrics as well let's concentrate little more on weft knitting as you have seen the same loop is same yarn is going to create loops and the same yarn continues to create a second row of loops then a third row of loops you can also understand if we pull one end of this yarn 
the entire fabric will unravel. So knitting or knitted fabrics are highly unstable if you do not give a proper seams all around. Now that also means unlike woven fabric you cannot cut this fabric and leave it. The moment you cut a knitted fabric you have to you have to stabilize that cut area with any of the seam techniques either with overlock seam or a flat lock seam or any other method. You have seen how this fabric has been created with the help of interlooping of yarns. So we have so many loops being formed here. Now how do we identify or what do we call the set of loops which run horizontally and vertically. So the set of loops run horizontally are known as cores. So this would be course 1 course 2, course 3, course 4 and the set of loops run vertically are known as whales. So this would be whale 1, whale 2, whale 3, whale 4, whale 5. Now that means let us say the machine is producing a fabric and we are going to knit it in this direction because it is weft knitting. So what is going to influence the length of the fabric and what is going to influence the width of the fabric? Now number of courses 1, 2, 3, 4 the moment you keep on increasing number of courses course 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 like that we are going to increase the length of the fabric the moment we increase number of whales which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the moment we increase that further we are going to increase the width of the fabric. So the course will determine the length of the fabric in weft netting and the whale will determine the width of the fabric in weft netting. You have seen how this fabrics are formed. Now, how are these loops formation take place? Now, we usually the thread is in a straight line. How does this loop forms? Now, for that, in any of the knitting machine, there will be a very important part called needle. So, a needle will pull this yarn and create a shape. So next needle will pull this particular area and create another one. So each loop here is created by different set of different needles. So needle number one would be working here, needle number two would be responsible for this loop, three for this, four for this, like that. So when we look at the complete fabric, Each veil is created by one particular needle. So the second veil would be created by the second needle, third veil would be with the third needle, etc. Now, imagine a flat long surface, we call it as needle bed and there are needles kept on those flat beds. Yarn would be available in certain height. The needle goes up, catch the yarn, pull it down, create a loop here. The same thing happened 
with this needle create another loop a third loop fourth loop fifth loop sixth loop like that so we have a metal plate packed with needles and we call the plate as needle bed and the needle bed will help the needles to be positioned in a way that the needle can go and catch the thread catch the yarn and create the loops now depending on the shape of the needle bed we have two different technologies been used for knitting the example i have drawn earlier that was a flat needle bed with needles placed on that now there will be one more needle bed just behind this create one more set of needles so basically a normal knitting machine i'll call it as now flat knitting machine because of the flat needle bed we have the flat knitting machine will have two beds and each bed will have one set of needles each now the same way there will be one more type of needle bed that will be in circular cylindrical shape needles would be arranged around the cylinder now if you look at this we have a starting point we have the first needle we have let's say there are uh, 50 needles 50th 50th needle also this is a clear starting point and end point for this needle bed here in circular needle knitting machine or the circular needle bed if you look at it there is no clear starting point if you count this as the first needle then if you keep on counting to uh, when you reach here it will be the 50th needle well if you count this as take this as the first needle then this would be the 50th needle like that so here it's a continuous array of needles around a cylinder that can also produce knitted fabrics a flat bed with a set of needles can also produce knitted fabric now here the usual product which you would be familiar with comes out of such circular bed knitting machine that's the name of it circular bed knitting machine that is because this needle bed is in circular shape or a cylindrical shape whereas this one is called a flat bed knitting machine that is because the flat needle bed this particular machine is having now here in this machine you will get a flat fabric coming out of it here in this machine you will have a tubular fabric coming out of it now from this machine you usually produce fine nets or t-shirts kind of materials here in flat bed knitting machine we produce coarser nets or the sweater kind of materials so if you identify t-shirt and sweater as the two major areas of knitted products t-shirts comes out of circular bed knitting machine and the sweaters comes out of flat bed knitting machine this video should be continued of after showing different uh, fabrics of different gauges you have seen different fabrics now what is the difference you noticed in certain fabrics you had 
bigger loops in certain fabrics you could not even see the loops because it was too tiny how do we differentiate this so bigger loop fabric or small loop fabric so what if something comes in between like this is much smaller compared to this this is a smaller loop size and compared to this this bigger so there has to be a scientific terminology used to categorize such kind of fabric that is called gauge now it is written with represented with two small g's now if you look at the different fabrics we have seen we had 5 gauge 7 gauge 8 gauge 10 12 14 16 18 like that towards this side we have 4 2 and half so starting the machine with the lowest gauge is 2 and 1/2 gauge and then we have gauges slight uh, slowly increasing beyond 18 we have 20 24 26 28 30 like that now this will have the biggest loop this will have the finest the smallest loop now if you look at the industry we have flat knitting industry and circular knitting industry we have flat knitting machine circular knitting machine we have sweaters and t-shirts you must have seen noticed sweaters will be having bigger loop sizes so usually sweaters are produced with these kind of machines and the t-shirts are produced with these kind of machines so here you will get sweaters here you will get t-shirts now when we talk about gauge alone now what is the meaning of let's say 5 gauge machine and how is it you have seen 5 gauge fabric how can we find out by looking at a fabric what will be the gauge a 5 gauge fabric meaning the fabrics been knitted in a 5 gauge machine so the gauge is directly connected to the machine now you remember we had a bed with needles in it if you take 1 inch let's say this is 1 inch the number of needles packed in that 1 inch would be known as gauge so if we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> needles in 1 inch this would be 6 gauge so 5 gauge meaning in 1 inch there will be 5 needles available in needle bed 10 gauge meaning in 1 inch there will be 10 needles available 18 gauge meaning in 1 inch there will be 18 needles now that means if this is 1 inch there are 18 needles available here if this is 1 inch there are 10 needles available here if it is this is 1 inch there will be 1 2 3 4 5 needles available here and now what about 2 and 1/2 now in 2 and 1/2 we cannot really count 1 inch it will be easier for us to count 2 inches in 2 inches there will be 1 2 3 4 5 5 so in 2 inch inches it will be 5 needles so when we divide that by 2 you will get the number of needles available in 1 inch which would be 2 and 1/2 gauge so from 2 and 1/2 gauge to 18 gauge usually would be flat knitted garments or sweaters the sweater category in 
from 20 onwards to 30 or more would be circular knitted fabrics and that is used for t-shirts generally. We have seen how this latch needle goes up and catch the yarn and come back with the help of a groove inside cam box. Now if I draw the cam box in detail, So if you remember the needle, the latch needle have a butt here which will get locked inside and the butt will move through the space and pushing the needle up and down and the moment needle goes up it will catch the yarn and when it pull down it create the loop. Now there are three basic stitches available in knitting. The first one we have already seen the needle will go up all the way catch the thread catch the yarn and create a interlooping and come back. That complete loop is known as knit We can also switch off this part of the cam box and when we try to operate this the needle will slowly raise and at this level it will bypass and then come down. That means the needle will go only halfway up and create a half loop called now in a third setting we can withdraw this particular cam as well that means the needle will just bypass this entire cam box and needle will never go up new loop will not be formed and that has been represented with a straight line and that has been called as miss. All the knitted structures would be a combination of any of these basic stitches. The full loop is known as knit, the half loop is known as tuck and no loop is called as miss. Now using the same cam box we can also change the size of the loop. Let's say the yarn is available here, needle goes up, cast the thread and pull it down. Now how much that is going to come down that defines the size of the loop. Probably if the needle is coming only little bit, the loop size would be smaller. If the needle is coming more and the loop size also will go up. To achieve various loop length, there, is, there are multiple cams available in knitting machine. Those are called stitch cams. The stitch can, cam can go up or down. We can set it in different positions in both sides. 
so let's say I am moving this cam box in this direction so the needle is available here so the needle will go up all the way and while it coming down the, the butt of the needle would be touching this cam, stitch cam, it slowly comes down and escape from this point. So let's say we have a medium size loop. I can change the setting of this to a much lower level setting. In that case, the needle will come lot more towards the bottom side and then escape creating a much bigger loop. I can also move this cam towards a higher level. In that case, the needle when it comes down will escape before reaching the normal position creating a smaller loop. So by adjusting the stitch cam into different levels, we can vary the size of the loop. Now why do we need two sets of stitch cams? That is because when we are going this direction, the needles will the needle butt will enter from the side and only this slope would be used to raise this needle and this slope would be used for the needle to come down. So when we change the direction of knitting into the opposite, the needles will enter from this side. This time this area would be this plane, this slope would be used for the needles to go up and this slope would be used for the needles to come down. So, depending on the direction, if let's say we are uh, doing like uh, number one direction left to right and number two direction right to left, this stitch cam would be used when the needle enters from the side. That means the direction is going to be right to left. So, this one is the second. A stitch cam number two stitch cam that de that defines uh, the direction of right to left and this one would be number one stitch cam which will define the direction of left to right We have seen in flat knitting machine the normal knitting cycle. Now we also know loops are made and there are loops being interlooped. Now let's look at this a little more closely. It means like we are going to zoom this further and create a 3D looking big loop. Now when the next loop comes on top of this, Now another side, if you look at this from the other side, the same loop would be formed like this. So this is the back side of a loop and this is the front side of the same loop. We are seeing the same loop from both sides. Now here you can, you know, loops are not so big. Some loops are as tiny as dots or even smaller than this. So we really do not see such kind of huge structures. What all we are going to see here is the impression of the prominent areas like this here. So that means in one area you will get something like this 
in another area you will get impression of these things meaning you will get something like this so these are two different side of the same knitted fabric now if you see a fabric a knitted fabric with v structure on one side and a float structure on the other side or horizontal streaks on the other side we can safely call that as single jersey a single jersey fabric meaning in a flat knitting needle bed in a flat knitting machine only one side bed is used for knitting if we use only one side of the needle bed for knitting we'll produce a fabric which is called single jersey and how to identify that single jersey one side there will be v mark the other side you will have horizontal streaks that actually comes out of one set of loops and one side would be v marks and the other side would be horizontal streaks now if you look at a fabric which looks exactly the same on both side then that would be called as a double jersey now what is double jersey it is nothing but a sandwich of two single jerseys so you don't see the back side of it you will see only the front side on both side so this would be a single jersey and this would be a double jersey now for double jersey you have to use both the needle bits the front bit as well as the back bit then you will get a double jersey fabric we have seen various basic fabric designs using the three basic stitches in knitting that is knit tuck and miss now a unique feature which is widely used in flat knitting industry is the transfer technique this is not a new stitch it is only a movement of any of the loops either sideways or from one bed to the other that creates a whole set of new designs in flat knitting industry how does this happen you can see the demo now what happens with uh, transferers you have to take out this loop either using a tool for it if it is a hand driven machine or automatically in case if it is a automated machine so take out the loops stretch it put it into the needles next to it e either way both ways if you do this this needle has become empty there are no loops here later on when you knit this fabric here in this area you will get a hole a small hole now using this technique you can arrange the holes in whatever shapes you want and create designs now when we shift or transfer the needle the loop from one bed to the other that is called transfer which can be represented like this let's say this is the front bed and this is the back and this is the back this is the front so 
either it can happen from front bed to back bed that is called transfer or it can also happen if the needle is if the loop is in the back bed and if you want to shift that loop into the front bed this can happen so where exactly do we use this one of the common area is when we start any flat knitted garments of fabric we'll start with a rib structure either one by one rib or a tubular rib once the now this is a double jersey fabric once we reach the rib level after that it's going to be a single jersey so here it is double jersey here it is single jersey at this level we have knitting happening on both the bed needles now once it reach here we have to empty one of the bed to continue or to create single jersey for that purpose we have to shift loops from one bed to the other so we can apply this technique any one of the technique and empty one side one bed completely and have all the loops into one of the bed continue knitting a single jersey this is one of the major application now the next method is what i have shown here shift the loop sideways within the bed if the loop is in front bed now instead of this we will have a uh, front bed only loops would be moved it's called move m o v e whereas this one is called transfer so the loop would be moved sideways if it is moved the loop would be transferred from one bed to the other if it is transfer it's very easy to understand if we move it sideways we can create patterns if you shift it from one bed to the other transfer it that also create a different pattern a pattern which in which front bed and back bed is involved you have come to the end of this unit to summarize in this unit you have been given an overview of knitting and been familiarized with fabric variations that are possible in flat knitting